the girls always cooked extra and brought it home when your dad was out looking for work so that I could pretend like I was able to stretch a nickel for your dad and he wouldn't be embarrassed, but we always had food on the table. She said, when your aunt was passing away, we were going to cancel Card Club, but instead, a week before she passed of breast cancer, um, we all sat on her bed and played cards with her and said bye goodbye to her one last time. Um, she jokes, there's only three of them left now. She jokes that every time one of them dies, they have to change the card game. <laughs> that um, one of these days, one of them will be sitting around by themselves playing solitaire, thinking about the rest. So the other thing is when my dad died, those ladies made sure that my mom got out of the house every single day for months until she was ready to get out of the house herself. Now I heard about this story and I was obviously blessed that my, you know, living across the country, I was blessed that my mom had this. But then I asked myself, did I? And I really didn't. At the time I was in a relationship that wasn't co-elevating. I didn't have a community with that level of vulnerability, that level of got your back, that level of intimacy. And so we started a community uh, at my home on, fr on Friday nights. Every month on a Friday night, we had four couples that would get together. And it was sort of like a combination of YPO Forum and AA. We'd all sort of go around and say, you know, what did we achieve? Where did we struggle? What do we look, you know, in this past month? And where are we going in the next month? Um, and it was, it was such a beautiful cohesion of co-elevation. And, I, and, and we, we suffered lots of things together, including the breakup of my marriage. Um, but I realized that I never wanted to be in a relationship that didn't have that. And it, and it really ratcheted up. I didn't have the word for co-elevation at the time. I called them lifeline relationships. But I became really zealously focused on how can I bring that degree of intimacy, that degree of connection, that degree of relationship, how can I bring it into my life, but in the process, how can I bring it into others? That's where we found the data that said that 50% of Americans didn't have their back. How could I walk around this world being unique in that if I invited you to my table, you would leave intimately connected and transformed in some way, tapping into something that other people didn't unleash in you? And it, it has allowed me, just a little kid from Pittsburgh in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, born of immigrant parents, to have the permission and the invitation to do extraordinary things. Some of the most powerful people in the world invite me in to help them think about community. This past couple of weeks, I was invited in by the king of Bhutan, who has now engineered a region of Bhutan, the happiest country in the world. Um, if everybody ever heard of Bhutan? happiest country in the world for many, many years. Unfortunately, it's no longer so since they've adopted social media. They're now starting to see the same problems of their teenage population of suicides and other things that they had never seen before. Um, and he's invited me in to ask, the, and he's created a region inside of his country as big as Singapore that the entire intention is to create well-being, mindfulness, and longevity. He wants to have this region be the world um, pinnacle of mindfulness and, and longevity so that people live to 120 and thrive there from all over the world. And he's asked me to create a community that will crack the code of what that looks like. I mean, shit. <laughs> I mean, that's, and that, you know, that literally just starts with me being a kid who didn't know anybody outside of blue collar work. Um, you know, little by little building an ecosystem of people and then showing up in a way that creates those kind of relationships, not with me and them, but among them. And that's the invitation to you um, to think differently about. And I tell you that in this digital forward world, it, it actually helps. It can be more abundant, it can be richer, it can be more psychologically safe. Don't think of technology as getting in the way of this type of engagement. It can actually make it more abundant and richer. Thank you.